Good evening. This evening, we celebrate our annual parish mass commemorating the souls of all the faithful departed who have passed away in the last year. Our entrance hymn is number 876, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say, number 876. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Dear sisters and brothers, we come together this evening on All Souls Day, the commemoration of all the faithful departed, to pray for our brothers and sisters who have left this world in faith and in the hope of resurrection, that we may assist them with our prayers, but also know the benefit of their prayers for us, always with thankful hearts for the many blessings that we have received from our brothers and sisters who have handed on to us our faith. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. O Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who willed that your only begotten Son, having conquered death, should pass over into the realm of heaven, grant, we pray, to our departed, to your departed servants, that with the mortality of this life overcome, they may gaze eternally on you, their Creator and Redeemer, 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold, our God, to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. 
We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus answered the Jews and said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes in the one who sent me has eternal life and will not come to condemnation but has passed from death to life. Amen, amen, I say to you, the hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For just as the Father has life in himself, so also he gave to his son the possession of life in himself. And he gave him power to exercise judgment because he is the son of man. Do not be amazed at this because the hour is coming in which all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and will come out. Those who have done good deeds to the resurrection of life, but those who have done wicked deeds to the resurrection of condemnation. The Gospel of the Lord. You please be seated. It was very early in my Catholic education when I learned about the privilege that we have as members of the body of Christ, as those who have faith in Jesus, to pray for those who have died. To unite our prayers and 
our sacrifices as a pleasing offering to God on behalf of all the faithful departed. First of all, of course, among the members of our family and our friends, those closest to us, to whom, to whom we owe so much. But our charity in praying for the dead, and praying for the dead is a work of charity, a work of mercy, isn't just limited to those in our own circle of family and friends. We pray for everyone. Everyone who has died in the hope of resurrection to eternal life. Where do we get this hope for eternal life? Our first reading from the prophet Isaiah points us to the mountain of the Lord of hosts where he will provide for all peoples. The mountain whereon he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, that is the the barriers of selfishness and pride and, and sin that cause us to do works of injustice, that show a lack of charity, compassion for others, that is so powerful in this world and that draws us into its webs, that that veil will be removed. The web woven over all nations will be torn and death will be destroyed forever. Now what is that mountain where the Lord of hosts will do this? Well, it's more, than a, more of a hill than a mountain. It's that little hill outside the walls of Jerusalem. In a place called Golgotha, the place of the skull. Mount Calvary. Where Jesus, for love of not just his family and friends and disciples, but for every human person willingly accepted death on our behalf. Death which is a, a consequence of sin. It's not a creative thing, it's a destructive thing. That sin and not God has created, if you will, Jesus was without sin, and yet his love was so profound in his heart, the love that he shared and received from his Father in heaven, that love was stronger than all of the sins of the whole human race that had ever been and were being and would ever be committed. Because love, communion in love with God through his Son in the Holy Spirit is the antidote for death. It turns death into a servant of eternal life. Jesus died, but because he loved us to the end and was faithful to his Father, death became a servant, released him unto eternal life, the life of the resurrection. And Jesus 
lavishly gives us the Holy Spirit with which he was anointed as the Christ to those who believe in him and are baptized so that the love of God, which is the Spirit, might dwell in us, transform us, empower us to love God and one another with the love of Jesus. And we, like Jesus, will embrace our death. A death which is a just punishment for our sins and the sins of others. But when the love of Jesus lives in our heart, or to put it in a more, well, a less appealing way, but an accurate way, when we die in the state of grace, then death gives way to eternal life. And the souls of the just are in the hand of God. No torment shall touch them. And already they are with God. And they are growing in the love they have for God. as they await the resurrection of our mortal bodies, which will happen on the last day when this world will finally pass away in its imperfection and be taken up into a new creation, a new heavens and a new earth where there is no sin but only charity, only self-giving love, no pride, no selfishness, no regret, no anger, no hopelessness, no depression, no darkness, but only life-giving light. As I anticipated the death of my father, which for many years I, I don't know if the proper word is dreaded, but it was pretty close to that. I feared it. But the Lord, who was always so good, gave to my father, to me, and to my mother and my sister and brothers, the grace to, to believe in the promise of eternal life. And I remember the day before my father died, praying the rosary for him. He, at that point, was unconscious. And having a, a good sense that it would be the last rosary I would pray with him, with both of us here in this world, the Lord gave to me, and I, I hope to my father, I believe to my father, a fortitude, a courage based in a trust in the promises of Jesus that to those who love God, all things work for the good. And that even the, the seeming finality and darkness of death will give way to something 
greater than anything my father or I have, had ever experienced in this world. The next morning I received a call that my father had passed. Very early in the morning, and so I went over to pray over his body and to give him the church's blessing. And I've shared this before, but I heard myself say to my father rather spontaneously as he lay there, as his body lay there in death, well, Dad, that wasn't so bad. Death has come, but even greater life is yet to come. Sisters and brothers, that's our faith. We know it's true because the love of God has been poured into our hearts through the gift of the Holy Spirit that comes to us through our faith in Jesus. St. Paul could explain very simply that those who have fallen asleep, the Christian euphemism for death, that the Lord will bring them to himself. And that at a future moment, we shall see them again from bodies that are now glorified, never to be parted in any respect again. But until that day, we have a living and ongoing relationship with the dead. Jesus, when he calls us to himself, calls us into this wonderful community of the saints, the church. And those bonds of communion, the bonds of charity, are stronger than death. And so our relationship with our loved ones doesn't end with death, but really just a new chapter begins. And the way that we would pray for our loved ones as they journeyed in life, this life with us, so we continue to pray for them. that that purification that we know is necessary if we are to stand before the Lord and look Him in the eye, that purification which the Lord in His mercy after death completes in us, a purification that must begin in, in this life because it's here where we have to receive the love and begin to learn how to love. But how beautiful that doctrine of purgatory which regrettably our, our Protestant Christian brothers and sisters do not see, do not accept, do not believe in, even though the scriptures are very clear about the importance of praying for the dead. And why would we pray for them unless they needed our prayers? To pray for them is a beautiful way to be united to the ongoing journey of our loved ones to final redemption in heaven. And we know that those who are in purgatory, they will be in heaven. How beautiful that we can, we can assist them with our prayers and sacrifices. And do they know we're assisting them? Oh, I should think so. 
just as they would hear us when we ask for their prayers and intercession, which, of course, they will gladly give us. That ongoing relationship that we have with the faithful departed, they continue to influence our lives on our earthly journey. And we hope that when we die, when that moment comes for us, and we die in the love of Christ, in the state of grace, that we will benefit from the prayers of others, both those who have known us and those who have not in this life, and be able to help them as well as they journey towards the Lord. Jesus assures us in this evening's gospel, whoever hears my word and believes in the Father who sent me, that one has the life of God living within them, and they will not come to condemnation, but they shall surely pass from death to life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. United in our Catholic faith, we acknowledge Christ as the Lord through whom we hope that our lowly bodies will be made like his own in glory. We now present to him all of our faithful departed. Please respond, grant our prayer, O Lord. Christ, son of the living God, who raised up Lazarus, your friend from the dead, Raise up to life and glory the dead whom you have redeemed by your precious blood. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. Christ, consoler of those who mourn, you dried the tears of the family of Lazarus, of the widow's son, and the daughter of Jairus. Comfort those who mourn for the dead. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. Christ, Savior, Destroy the reign of sin in our earthly bodies, so that just as through sin we deserved punishment, so through you we may gain eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. Christ, Redeemer, look on those who have no hope because they do not know you. May they receive faith in the resurrection and in the life of the world to come. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. You revealed yourself to the blind man who begged for the light of his eyes. Show your face to the dead who are still deprived of your light. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. When at last our earthly home is dissolved, give us a home not of earthly making, but built of eternity in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For those who have died in the past year, for the repose of the soul of Marilis Joan Byron, we pray to the Lord. Grant, Grant our, our prayer, prayer O Lord. Lord. For the repose of the soul of Mary Margaret Blizzard, we pray to the Lord. Grant, Grant our, our prayer, prayer O Lord. Lord. For the repose of the soul of Ronnie Marie Corey, we pray to the Lord. Grant, Grant our, our prayer, prayer O Lord. Lord. For the repose of the soul of Christopher Cronin, we pray to the Lord. Grant, Grant our, our prayer, prayer O Lord. For the repose of the soul of William Patrick Halby, we pray to the Lord. Grant, Grant our, our prayer, prayer O Lord. Lord. For the repose of the soul of Sarah Monica Hartman, we pray to the Lord. Grant, Grant our, our prayer, prayer O Lord. Lord. For the repose of the soul of Leonard John Moriarty, we pray to the Lord. Grant, Grant our, our prayer, O Lord. Lord. For the repose of the soul of Gerald Frank 
Muller. We pray to the Lord, grant, grant our, our prayer, prayer o Lord, Lord, for the repose of the soul of Elizabeth Ann Nash. We pray to the Lord, grant, grant our, our prayer, prayer o Lord, Lord, for the repose of the soul of Frida Patricia Sarney. We pray to the Lord, grant, grant our, our prayer, prayer o Lord, Lord, for the repose of the soul of Yoshiko Isobe Waldner. We pray to the Lord, grant, grant our, our prayer, prayer o Lord, Lord, for the repose of the soul of Lawrence Milton White. We pray to the Lord, grant, grant our, our prayer, prayer o Lord. Lord. And for all of those who have died in Christ, whose names are so lovingly written upon the envelopes on our altar, we pray to the Lord. Grant, Grant our, our prayer, prayer O Lord. Lord. God, our creator and redeemer, by your power, Christ conquered death and returned to you in glory. May all your people who have gone before us in faith share his victory and enjoy the vision of your glory forever where Christ lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, Lord, in your kindness, the sacrificial offerings we make for all your servants who sleep in Christ, that set free from the bonds of death by this singular sacrifice they may merit eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for it is at your summons that we came to birth. By your will that we are governed, and at your command that we return on account of sin to that earth from which we came. And when you give the sign, we who have been redeemed by the death of your Son shall be raised up to the glory of his resurrection. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of us, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The sun in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When, when we, we eat this bread and drink, drink this cup, we, we proclaim your death, O Lord, Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants whom you have called from this world to yourself. Marilus, Mary, Ronnie, Christopher, William, Sarah, Leonard, Gerald, Elizabeth, Frida, Yoshiko, Lawrence. Grant that they, 
who were united with your Son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Hugh of Grenoble, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Rule him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. On your stay, we tall is peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On your stay, we tall is peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Through these sacrificial gifts, which we have received, O Lord, bestow on your departed servants your great mercy. And to those you have endowed with the grace of baptism, grant also the fullness of eternal joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We thank the Lord for the grace to be able to gather this evening to pray for all the faithful departed. As we continue to honor them and sacrifice for them by following the Lord faithfully in this life, we hope that by the grace of God, we shall be reunited with them in eternal life. And now let's pray together our prayer to St. Joseph, whom we honor in a special way this year. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you God entrusted his only Son. In you Mary placed her trust, with you Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Immaculate Mary, our praises we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria. Our final hymn is number 731, God of Love, number 731. in 